I had to do this now, I would never do it. Um, this is not gonna be structured whatsoever. Um, I'm going to try to put some fucking, um, excuse me, this is gonna be NSFW language. Um, and I'm gonna try to put some images here or something like that to make, to have you something that you can actually look at and watch or whatever. Um, if you're an Auburn fan, I don't think you would expect high quality content, even if it has been about now almost two hours since the game ended. But, um, I'm going to just kind of give some brief overview uh, thoughts about this season, uh, really about this game, but also the season of macro sense. Um, I don't know how long this will be. Usually if I start going, I kind of start going, but if I don't, it's going to be very short, so we'll just see. I'm going to pull it. Huh, let me look at some stats. Um, as far as the structure of the game, first half, I'm going to try to come by this with some kind of knowledge of, of basketball. I don't think I have a lot, but I have a little bit. Um... The first half, Auburn did a abundance of successful pick and rolls to the rim. Um, basically, Houston would try to trap the ball handlers. Actually, I want to say successful pick and rolls, but Auburn uh, Houston would try to trap the ball handlers off of screens, which literally is a game plan they took from just name any game in the last ten games Auburn played last year, fifteen games even. Basically, everything that they would do to stop. Walker Kessler, or at least limit his impact, is they would trap Wendell on the picks. Um, Auburn handled those so badly last year that it would just usually result in a turnover. Um, earlier this year, when it kind of was done more sparingly, it was on kind of like 10 to 12 seconds, taking off the shot clock before they got into like the ball to the next person and they got the offense set back up. Um, but here, off those little picks, they would trap. Auburn did a really good job preemptively passing to the the Nets. El, net, I want to say elbow or wing. Yes, the Nets the Nets wing player, um, or even in a few instances, they kind of snuck them between the trap. Uh, they snuck them around the trap a couple times. But the the point being, Auburn did a wonderful job of adjusting uh, preemptively, even in practice, but obviously on the court to traps. Got to pretty much. Houston just couldn't trap the ball handler. Um, that kind of came about more in the second half. But Houston, really their best offense Auburn had was making Houston trap and just playing uh, four on three. Uh, created quite a few uh, one-on-one kind of relatively easy looks around the rim. I did a lot of trapping broom or trapping bigs around the uh, baseline, which created a few opportunities for some, some looks. Although broom, broom's biggest problem... I feel it's a hub for the offense all year. It's been a simple fact that he just is horrible at finding the next player when he's getting trapped. And often, I mean, he gets doubled in the baselines, but, like, even then, it's usually dudes that rotate over to provide him an outlet. Auburn doesn't always do that well, but I feel like with Broom in particular, usually people come over and help. But, um... He's been always so bad at actually being a, a fulcrum to get other guys open when he's being doubled. And in this game, I don't think he do, did a wonderful job of helping in that. But um, generally speaking, I just thought Auburn did a wonderful job of kind of getting the uh, the ball to um, not stick too much and, and get out there to other people. Um, created a, a good few open threes, I thought. Um I really, the guards just played more dynamically. Uh, I would say the guards, all the ball handlers, Flanagan, Katie, um, Trey, I, th I thought he did a really good job of continuing where they kind of left off at last game in that first half. Just really smart basketball play. I, mean, I, I didn't think there were too many turnovers in that first half. I can't think of the top of my head, but I thought he just played well. The ball didn't stick. Uh, everything you could really ask for. Um that second half, I mean, just fuck. I mean, the fouls came in in the first half, too, to some degree. Not quite as bad, although the worst of people in foul trouble, or at least what you would say foul trouble in the first half. But that fucking second half, too. I mean, you got everything you want as far as just great looks around the rim with Wendell getting chased down and blocked, uh, Broom getting one-on-one -on -one looks, and honestly, Broom just moving well. Broom moved well in open space. I mean, moved well without the ball. Uh, some really good... Uh, flex action that Auburn has been running for the last few games and had some success with and had success with in this game as well. Uh, getting Broom isolated, going to the rim, and just continuously um, 
You know, I mean, people are putting the onus on him for not finishing some of those and one opportunities because he was right by the rim on quite a few of the fouls. But it's tough. I mean, these teams were selling out to make sure that he had as hard a uh, uh, hard and endeavor as possible in completing those um, field goal attempts. And, I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy to make layups when you have fucking monsters like Jerace Walker uh, bearing down on your fucking back or, you know, uh, Jawan Roberts uh, – in front of you just ripping the shit out of you, you know? I mean, it's not easy to make those layups. It's it's possible. I mean, if you have a certain level of strength, you probably should. And we did make quite a few and ones. I mean, Jalen, that's kind of how he got going with even with his three-pointer being fucking shattered. Uh, I think he made one, but as a whole, uh, holy shit, dude. It, what's it, like, one of four? One of five? One of five, yeah. One of five, five of 14. Uh, he did some of the dirty work, but... The thing is, Jalen is a finesse player around the rim. I mean, he's... And that's good. Like, if you are a guy with finesse capabilities that can also stretch out to the three-point line, those finesse capabilities become easier. If you are a shooter, people have to come respect you. You drive past them. You get those floors that he likes to do. We you get some of those hook shots. That's just that he can do. But when three was just brick as hell and he had to kind of be the, the paint guy. I mean, Jalen's a very strong player, but, I mean, fucking Jerase Walker. Jerase Walker, this is the reason we recruit that motherfucker, um, put the full court press on. That dude was a fucking d- animal. Um, I hope he comes to Auburn one day. Um, a 30-point difference in the free throw discrepancy. They shot 24-29. We shot 19-36. I believe they went 16-16 in the second half. They just fucking put it on us with the free throws. Um I think the first half was relatively comparable in terms of rebounds, although we were definitely down. That second half, I feel like we were just going to fucking crush. We lost that battle by 11. I actually tied in terms of assist, which makes sense because Houston just was, their their buckets were just of the, um, your guys are, your guards are not fucking comparable in terms of us defensively. So we're going to break them off the dribble every fucking time. Uh, Katie Johnson, I thought, played a pretty good job defensively. But Zep, he, Zep just is not, good enough defensively to where it matters how much of a, a limitation he is uh, frame-wise um, def- defensively. He's a fucking nuisance. If you are his frame, he's going to be a fucking problem. The problem is just in today's game, it's so easy to force switches. It's so easy to get a bigger guy matching with a smaller guy. And Mark just took him into that free throw area and fucking shot over him every time. He either fouled or he got fucking shot on. Uh, Wendell was just in hell. Um... Even Katie, I mean, Katie got a couple of tough buckets over him, but Katie, I thought, was probably their best of their shorter guys. Uh, Flanagan, I feel like, had a pretty good game defensively, uh, but, you know, put Flanagan on one guy, and they had guys that could create the dribble up and down the roster. I mean, Sasser looked way... That, that was the fucking biggest thing, is that Sasser could fucking play. I mean, that was... I, I almost I honestly think at a certain point, it was pretty much predicated that we needed Sasser to be off. Um, today, and uh, he wasn't at all. He was, I mean, he might have been, as they kept on joking about 60%, but that motherfucker, his off the dribble stuff was just as good as it's ever been. I mean, that last second uh, sidestep three to pretty much put the game under out off, dude, I'm like literally, my brain is fried right now, I'm sorry, uh, out of reach when he got eight points with two minutes left or so. He just crushed Auburn every time he got a chance to do something, and he didn't get a main chance because of how long he was. Uh, on the, uh, the the proverbial and the literal bench, but dude, him, he just was a fucking monster. Uh, Sharp hit one three that was uh, was tough. Um, dude, I, I just I, I, every shot they needed to hit, they hit, and they hit it again and again. Derace had ten. Mark had nine rebounds. Roberts had seven rebounds. Uh, Sharp had four rebounds. I mean, just these dudes that were just physically fucking better. And that's the thing, man. Auburn, even Auburn's size, like, they're not athletes. Like, Broom is not an athlete. I mean, he's very smart. He uh, maximizes his lack of athleticism as a 6'11 guy, but he's not an athlete. He's not a quick twitch guy. Um, everything is going to take some effort for him. Oh, fuck, dude. Houston, top to bottom. I mean, quick twitch is all they fucking have. I mean, Jerace is. Those chase down bucks Jerace had on fucking Wendell again and again, dude, was fucking monstrous. Robert's a fucking just manimal. Uh, Mark even, I mean, Jalen, he's a really athletic dude. Like, he's not 
a, a jumper, though. I don't think he has athleticism. He has a vert a little bit, but he's not a jumper. He's not a quick twitch dude. He's um, not particularly fast, I think, side to side. I, thought, I think he's very smart again. And then you get down to the guards. I mean, the guards are just – every one of the guards is just bigger than our guards. It's, it's just a problem. It wasn't much of a problem last year because Walker, while he's not necessarily a jumper, I mean, he's so long. His, his radius is so insane. Uh, Jabari's radius is so insane. Those guys were Those guys were smart. And they had physical advantages. The problem is that now our four and fives don't have physical advantages. They are undersized, or at least they're average size. And um, average size while being like pretty neutral um, athletes will get you fucked up rebounding wise. And that's what happens, especially when you have um, guards that don't impact rebounding whatsoever, as ours uh, do not. Flanagan, he does so much well. I would say Flanagan is our best rebounder on this team, and it's not even close. It's not even like Flanagan is a sit sits player that is rebounding like a sits nine guy. I mean his his quick twitch. He's probably the only guy that's quick twitch on this, you know, in, the, in our main rotation. I mean, I like Chris Moore's hustle. I don't think I'd say like he's like a jumper, but he is a very athletic dude. I don't know. You don't get to see much of him, but he's a very athletic person. Like I'm not gonna really take anything away from him. A uh, Cartwell can jump. Uh, Cartwell's timing is so fucking bad that like it doesn't even matter almost. But his timing aside, he is athlete. Um, He's just tired so fucking bad. Um, Donaldson, dude. It's going gonna, it's gonna to leave a bad taste in some people's mouth. Donaldson to get more, more playing time. Uh, Wendell Finch with 32 minutes. Donaldson had eight. It's going to hurt a lot of people that he didn't get more minutes. I mean, Bruce's ideology at that moment, Bruce's thought was that once it started slipping, and it did start slipping with Trey on the court. It wasn't like they didn't have a massive advantage lead-wise or anything like that, but it did start getting to a point where they started creeping up to make it a neutral in terms of the point advantage, and they started like kind of eclipsing us in terms of their points. Uh, that did happen with Trey on the court. It wasn't like people looked, made it look like Wendell was on the court the entire time we started getting our ass kicked. That wasn't the case. Um, but I think Bruce thought in his head that once it became a thing where it kind of became a slower, more physical game, uh, you needed your more experienced guy on the court, and he pretty much ended the half with Wendell on the court. I'll say that Bruce, as far as the spectrum of like trusting upperclassmen to a fault, which a lot of older coaches do, and I think Bruce is closer to an older coach than he is a younger coach, uh, ideology wise. It's tough because a lot of those guys really think that there's certain intangibles that experience brings that exceed kind of other intangibles. Like, to me, Trey has a certain spunk and certain level of creativity. That that brings up that nobody else in this roster has, and when you have that in a four general, you kind of always have the puncher's chance of like creating something offensively. But when you have what we had down the stretch, which is pretty much Wendell, Katie, um, kind of mismatch between um, you know Flanagan and some Chris Moore minutes, but primarily pretty much we pretty much ran the, the starting lineup to the uh, finish line at a certain point there. Um, with brief intermissions, that lineup does not offer you really any flexibility in terms of the end results. The possibility, for the most part, with Wendell, Katie, Flanagan, Broom, and Jalen, are that if the shot is not falling, you're going to have guys who are negative three point shooters. Anyway, even with the, if the shot is falling, not all those guys are not plus three point shooters. Uh, Katie's made some, you know, in the past couple games, but he finished one of seven and uh, finished O of three in the second half. I remember the one he made was in the first half. Um, I, the rest of them suck. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to put it. Wendell is not a great three point shooter. He limited his attempts uh, as of late, which probably for the best. Uh, he went one of two. The other he missed was like. Um, he was wide open. So uh, he took smart shots, right? Um, Jalen, he got it, he don't. And that's really the best way to put it. He got it, he don't. Um, these are just not guys that threaten you from three-pointer. And that's the problem. That, like, when you run, or you are running sets that involve like these dribble handoffs or these uh, curl screens, if you aren't really a threat to pull up off that curl screen, that really limits the possibilities. You can pretty much say, like, I'm going to sink 
on, like, what a curl screen can do for you is that the big can sometimes roll behind the guy, uh, the defender, and get an alley-oop or something like that. But if you just say, hey, I'm going to sink um, and basically have two guys in front of the defender, well, at that point, if they pull mid up, uh, pull a pull-up mid-range or shoot a three-pointer. And Flanagan often does the pull-up mid-ranges, which, hmm, uh, Jalen, he'll do some of those floaters. Yeah. Uh... You know, Flanagan, uh, Wendell, 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 he'll do some pull-ups, but Wendell, I don't think, is the best in terms of off-the-dribble decisiveness. And when I, when I say that, I mean, like, I don't think he always, he, I don't think he can always change what he wants to do. Like, I think that sometimes if he says, I'm, I'm going to look at this, evaluate and say, I'm going to do a pull-up mid-range, he is pretty much sworn into that result. Or if he says, I'm going to come off this screen and do a three-pointer, I don't always think what is ahead of him is something he can adjust to. If that scene changes suddenly, I don't always think he can switch as quickly as he should be, which makes him not a great pull-up option. Because if you're saying, I'm going to drive, and now the pull-up is there, but the drive isn't, well, then you have a situation where you kind of do a contested layup instead of a, what would be an open pull-up. He doesn't have a great pull-up shot. It's not a great one. I mean, it's something he he has done before, but I don't think it's a great pull-up shot. Um, let's talk about what Houston did, I feel like, that second half. I thought Houston did a really good job of just saying, okay, we're going to play straight up on some of these screens, but we're not going to give like these easy lanes to the rim. We're going to pretty much collapse if you drive. And they did a really good job of just saying, you got your screen, you have your roller, so what we're going to do is we're going to value the roller more than the driver. Which they did, and they gave that that gave Wendell some layups, which got chased down, blocked by Drace or whoever. Uh, some tough contest, some free opportunities, which we didn't make. Or you say, okay, now Broom has it. Broom has it one on one. So now, boom, trap. So either Broom gets past the trap, which he's done a couple times, and he gets fouled, or he passes back out, and we re rotate. And the shots are not falling, which they did not in the second half for the most part. Uh, I can barely remember any that were made in the second half. Then boom, you're fucked. You either have a very tough layup or basically around the rim opportunity that will more than likely result in a foul or you get to pass it back out. I would think that with the looks we get under the rim, a field goal make is probably the least likely opportunity when you have two giants just slapping at you. Either you're going to get fouled or you're going to pass it back out. But... The problem is that people see that level of proximity next to the rim and think, well, probably should finish this, especially if you're already going up, which in some of the realities, we did just go up. We got the ball off of those um, rolling opportunities and we just put it up. And because we were getting slapped, uh, I guess we just didn't have the finesse to finish. Tough contest, which we didn't for the most part. I don't remember many and ones that the second half came along. Um, so they pretty much just kind of put it on 10 and just make sure they stopped the bigs for being a threat to finish and they just let the guards do whatever they're going to do and the guards unfortunately could not figure out how to put the ball on hoop uh down the stretch there so just some fucking dreadful offense i would say in the second half um but really just they pretty much took out what we could do and just made us do things we couldn't do we had to be a plus perimeter shooting team if we were going to basically make them pay for how much they were doing around the paint to limit uh, easy opportunities, e- easy layups, uh, easy putbacks, easy whatevers. And we couldn't do that. We couldn't be a third perimeter shooting team. We have never been a perimeter shooting team for the most part of this entire season. And um, it just is what it is, you know. I mean, I thought a lot of the ones we took were open. I mean, I thought most of Jalen's were open. I thought Wendell's, his two was, were open. Uh, Flanagan, he had, he had maybe an open one. KD, he had some open ones down the stretch and just did not go in. Um, it's tough, dude. It's tough. It's tough. You can got shooters. It's, it's not what you can do nowadays with the athleticism that, that's out there if you are not able to shoot. You can get some crazy half-court sets, but at the end of the day, dude, at this level, when you're at the round of 32, you're playing against the, the best, arguably the best defense in the, in the league, um, you know, athletically speaking, at the very least. If you can't get anything fucking shooting-wise, it's tough, man. 
Um, as far as the big picture standpoint, dude, I mean, I really think that we're going to go into the portal. I think you'll see at least four new dudes, in my opinion. That's just a number I've seen thrown out there. I mean, it's one that makes sense to me, dude. I would say bare minimum, you need about four new guys. Uh, your rotation, if you're looking at it, dude, you're, you're going to lose Zep. You're probably going to lose Flanagan. That's two dudes gone. Um, I would say you don't need... You probably don't want to have Dylan at this point be your backup center. I think you need a center you could probably say I'm going to give, especially if it's Broom as your starter. You probably need a center you're going to send him to get about 13, 14 minutes from. That's just my thought process there. Um, and you want to have that guy be somebody that can be an offensive weapon to some degree outside of just being a you know a putback dude. Um, so I, I would I think you bring another center. I don't see Stretchman on this roster next season. Uh, so that's three dudes right there. Uh, Flanagan, Jasper, Stretch. Get those scholarships back. I think you keep Dylan. I just don't think you have Dylan be like the the second center. I, I think he's good in a stretch role pretty much like in break, break glass in case of emergency. Um, probably need another four. I like Chris Moore. I don't think Chris Moore always gets used the right way on this team. Uh, in fact, I would say it probably doesn't, but um, for whatever reason, I mean, they just don't give Stretch or Chris some of the minutes I would expect for somebody who does as much he does glue guy-wise. Um, so I'm going to be surprised if you bring another four. Uh, then you bring in, you're bringing in at least uh, one guy because you're bringing in, um, fucking, what's his name? Um, Aiden Holloway. <sighs> So I, I would say bare minimum, you're just looking at four new faces in rotation. And I mean, like, actually like rotation players, because uh, I think Aiden will at least be that. I'd say at least four new dudes. I think you got some talent here, but you really got to just look to reconfigure who is where. Like, I think, should you be given Wendell 32 minutes a game as, like, your primary facilitator? Probably not. I, I just don't think that's how that should be working. I don't think Broom is a guy that um, succeeds every night against every matchup. Um, I think he is dude that you can have out there and be confident you have a good center, but like some of his athleticism and that that gap he has athletically against some of the best centers in the league, dude, it's 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 tough to overcome. It's it's I mean it's not always easy to overcome his lack of athleticism, dude. I mean, I don't mean to diminish him or what he brings. He's a good center. He's a definitely good college center, but like that lateral speed gets him sometimes, and you know. That, uh, that lack of jump, you know, that kind of, he's not a, he's not a rim runner threat. You know, he's a roll. You get him the rim, uh, give him the ball around the rim, maybe get you like a hook shot or, you know, a tough finish. But, like, it's hard when you have a team that's built as heavy around the 1-5 uh, pick and roll where you have a guy that's not a, a oop threat, you know. I mean, there's no oop to it, and they run a lot of sets that involve, you know, one five pick and roll as kind of the base foundation of what they do, and it's just, you know, a one five pick and roll that doesn't always create switches, and, you know, you're just kind of just doing it just to kind of give a guy the ball and the short roll maybe, or, you know, maybe a touch around the rim that's with some momentum. I mean, that's not what's worked for this system before, so, I mean, I don't, I don't know, you know. I mean, he did some of that with Alt Wiley, but Wiley's just Wiley as bad as his hands were. He was such so much more of an athlete. Like I felt like he looked like he was taller. Uh, he also was just more. He's a fucking massive human being. Um, and I, I don't always feel like Broom is a massive human being. I don't. I don't always feel like that. Um, yeah, I would say I would say bare minimum. I think you need to bring in a true point. Like a true playmaker, I think you need that. Like a Mark Sears, a Jason type of guy, uh, somebody like that uh, that Alabama brought in. You kind of need that for your, your team on this this um this run. Um, I was, I mean, even Westry like makes it happen, dude. I would still say you probably need one more competent kind of combo guard, not combo guard, but like in terms of the frame, but like combo guard has like. They can be a shooter. They can be a scorer. Those guys don't fall on trees by any means. But another like sit sits guy that kind of gives you some flexibility on the wings. Let me just say that you need another sit sits adjacent guy to get you flexibility on the wings. What that playmaking style looks like, I don't know. But you need that type of guy again because you have too many guys that just are not tall. What the fuck? And um, 
We can't play too many matchups. I mean, the backup three is a 6'4", very unathletic guy that's really smart, very sound player, very good glue guy, Leo, Leo Berman. But he's not athletically or frame-wise you need to have a backup three um, at all. So, I like Leo Berman. Like, don't get me wrong. I just, just limitations there that that shouldn't be your backup three at all. Um, so, I think Westry will be starting at that position, but you do need somebody else to be behind Westry. Uh, I don't think Flanagan will be on this team again. Um, so, yeah. Um, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, let's just, let's just kind of down. One guard, a playmaker, one kind of hybrid wing. I would say somebody could probably play a two or a three, but closer to six, six. Um, one four, probably. And I would probably say one five. So, another center, another power four. I don't know how good it need to be. That kind of is based on your evaluation of how much you have now, which I would say if Jalen leaves, which is a possibility. I don't think it's a guarantee, but a possibility. You need a probably a Jalen level four at least. Because, I, I mean, I like Chris Moore, but I don't think Chris Moore is like, you know, that uh, in terms of his skill level. But um, probably another four that's like starter level, day one type type guy. And then another, another five. I mean, I think you need another five. Another, another rotation guy that, that's in a spot. Now, can you pull four? recruits on top of Aiden Holloway onto a core that theoretically all of them can uh, come back. The only way you can do that, in my opinion, is if you start pushing some motherfuckers out. And uh, I don't want to push anybody out because, I mean, everybody's come here as uh, sweat, pride, shed blood for this team. I don't want to push anybody out, but, like, the only way to do what you probably need to do to make the championship contender next year is to push dudes out. So, in being realistic here, just don't be surprised if you're looking up Next season, you see like four new contributors on this team and four guys that were contributors on this team that are not on this team next year. Uh, for one reason or another, you know, maybe of their own will, maybe because they transferred out, maybe because they got pushed out, whatever. Uh, there's some dudes that probably would just leave of their own accord. I mean, you can see some dudes that have some talent here that just are not being used, I feel like. Chris Moore. Um, and they probably could get more burned somewhere else, but. I don't know, that's about it. Uh, I thought it was a good season. It wasn't a great season. It was a rebuilding year, which this was not marketed to anybody as a rebuilding year. Uh, it's marketed pretty much as a retooling year, one where you probably have a drop off, but not like a drop. I would say a drop down, not a drop off, which they had a drop off. They fell six spots. That's a drop off. Um, I think a more graceful three to four spot uh, decrease is what would have been probably expected. But we got what we got, and it was um, good. It wasn't great. Metrics bears out as a good team. Uh, the eye test bears out as a good, sometimes, but not bad team. Um, to any team that could like go in there, beat the shot at Houston away, beat them in the first half, or just dog walked Iowa for 60% of the game, you know, 50% of the game, or, or just beat the shot of Tennessee. Even with it being Auburn, beat the shot of Tennessee. Like, that's a good team. But any team that loses to Vanderbilt, loses to Georgia, that's a bad team. Even if it's on the road. Like, those just are not games you can, like, lose to on the road, you know. Um, so, the eye test says this was a good team and a great one. Uh, probably could have been a little bit better if some things went another way. But, you know. So, that's it. That's it for me. That's it for Auburn basketball until at least next season. I don't think I have anything else to say about this, this program at this point. Uh, maybe if we bring in some talent, I just don't have anything new to say because I mean, you kind of you gotta see it. You gotta see it. I think the Auburn still has the benefit of the doubt, or Bruce Pearl, that regime has the benefit of the doubt to me until I see two bad seasons or two of these seasons at the very least. That's when I will say we are behind the pack because I felt like everybody got better that we were competing with, except Kentucky. But or, or Arkansas didn't really get better, but they kind of just. Yeah, pretty much what they are. They're their March. Everything else sucks, but they're March. Um, Tennessee got, mm, I would say, marginally better, if not. Well, with Ziegler in the court, yeah, I'd say they're pretty much about the same. Maybe a little bit better in, in some situations, but pretty much the same. Um, Alabama got better, obviously. A&M got better. Um, you know, so Missouri got better. Um we didn't get better. We got worse, but I don't think we are a worse program per se. We just are a worse team in this very moment. You have two years like this where you will look just under talented compared to just about everybody that you're trying to compete with. That is when I say you have fell behind the pack, demonstrably speaking. 
Um, so we'll see what this looks like. I would be very surprised if Armin is not competing again for the SEC title next season. Uh, Bruce just had not. Bruce has earned the right for me to say that this team should not be bad two years in a row. Now they could be, but Bruce has earned at least the benefit of the doubt to say they should not be. However, Bruce is not. Bruce has somewhat lost the right for me to just look at a team that's seemingly good and then for me to say that they are good, which is what I said this season. I said this team looks to be promising, and they should be promising. They should be top four in the SEC. And, boy, I might have said differently if it was after Westry got hurt or it was after I saw Trey Orr. I basically did not know how to play basketball. But, fuck, dude. <laughs> God, that was tough. I mean, we didn't even play Dre- Trey that much until, like, at that stretch when Wendell got hurt. I mean... But then they didn't want to really trade too much burn because I don't know why. They didn't want really to give Westry too much time as a three instead of a one. I don't know why they kept on playing Westry as a one instead of three. But Treyor, I mean, they pretty much gave him a shot. He kind of was, eh. And then they stopped playing him. And then they said, okay, well, we need you again. And then it's just this team didn't dedicate itself towards being one that actually sought to be, like, I don't know, better for the future. It kind of just like, well, well, you know, we um, we got these experienced guys on this team and we kind of got to play them a little bit. Like, why the fuck is Zepp Jasper have eight more minutes, nine more minutes than Trey Donaldson? He's reportedly a better defender. But, like, what the fuck is he actually giving you? Zepp Jasper's offense is so fucking bad that, like, it's almost a negative to have him out there as the... You know, in the, the grand scheme of a plus and minus perspective, like, okay, so there's plus and minus. Like, I know he led the team plus and minus in the last year. But, like, he plays in a starter lineup when you have two NBA players on the team, and then he doesn't play at all in the second unit because he doesn't do anything offensively to make it worth staggering him with the second unit. He just only plays the best players on the, on the court when everybody else that sets up the offense on the court, and he's just there playing defense and maybe getting, like, one three every five games. When you had him in this season where there's not two NBA players on the court, when he's on the court, and he has to actually do something, he doesn't do anything. He played 17 minutes while Katie Johnson, pretty much any, any game where Katie is competent offensively, uh, uh, not a sell job def- uh, offensively, he plays more minutes than Zip. But why the fuck is Zip playing 17 minutes and Trey's playing eight? Your most dynamic facilitator, I, I, I haven't understood this for, for months, really. Your most dynamic playmaker, which Trey has been objectively, I think, a better facilitator, or at least a, one with more of a mindset to be a facilitator than uh, than uh, Wendell, who I you know I think Wendell is probably the most important player on this team. But for all things Wendell does right, I mean, he's not he's not a guy that sets guys that are, got, sets guys up instinctually the way that Trey does. But. Trey has been a fucking DMP in some games. I just don't I don't get how a guy that is your best playmaker for a team that's devoid of self creation uh has gotten so little time as Trey's gotten even after the last game. I know defensively he's not exactly there, but um how much is defense like I I think there's so much of a, a fucking emphasis put on defense on this team that just doesn't make sense. Like you're saying that Zep's reputation defensively and his you know, nuisance status is meriting him playing out there. But if he's doing nothing offensively and the guys are just shooting over him, how much is it worth to be just a fucking pest? Like, okay, he looked good. He was there. I mean, he could test the shot. But, like, he got three fouls in 17 minutes and he doesn't score. And um, he can't he can't guard. Um, what is it guard down? I think I'm trying to remember which one it is. Um I think guard ups when you play like dudes that are small and guard downs like you play dudes that are bigger. Whichever one, he can't guard down. Let's just say guard down. He can't guard down. If a dude is bigger than him, um, let's say guard up. Actually, I think guard up is the way. Guard up. Let's say uh, against anybody that's bigger than him, he's just he's just there. He's just he's just there. But like he's not like big. He doesn't like really contest the, the shots. They just shoot over him. He's just a very big nuisance until they rise up and shoot the shots, and then he's not there. Um, so I mean, I don't. I don't, I don't know what the why why Trey Donaldson was like not getting minutes. In the inconsequential games where we were fucking losing, I don't know why we were not giving the guy that showed promise as an eighteen year old more time or nineteen year old more time than twenty six year old that showed he could not like do anything offensively. I don't understand like 
kind of was divvied up mentally speaking. Um, like we were just going to get our ass kicked by like 20 or whatever against like Kentucky. Um, why is Trey not playing the entire like back half when we like just get the shit kicked out of us? Why are we putting the backups in like two minutes left? We're fucking down 30 points. I, what are you doing? Like, what, 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 like, we got we to gotta press a button. And we pressed a button, I felt like, with Trey last game. I don't know why we didn't press that button more in this game. Not at the expense of Wendell, but just at the expense of a guy who doesn't do anything offensively in Zeb Jasper. We weren't stopping them. I mean, like, they, either Mark was coming down and making a, mid, a mid-range shot, or they were getting fouled, or then Sasser and she came back and it was over with. So, I mean, like, at what point is it going to have that you, like, say, okay, well, the defense is doing so fucking well that we just need to fucking put, um, you know, Zep Ben over, over Trey and just leave him in there because he's keeping the defense going, you know, by getting shot over by the guys five and taller than him. What the fuck is about? All right, I'm done. Um, that's it. That's the other thing that pissed me off. It's just, it's just the chance shit, as I understand, Chance's knee, even when he came back, was not 100%. Like, there was a lot of trust that was not put there in that knee. So it makes sense why he wasn't, you know, Given every opportunity in the world to be just at least a scorer. I don't know why I'm not force feeding him as a fucking playmaker, which, God, fuck, that shit hurts my brain because we had literally had a playmaker on the fucking roster and, and Trey. That was stupid, but I can get past that. The, the fucking, the, the fucking insistence to fucking play Zepp, who was maybe the worst fucking offensive player in the entire fucking rotation, even with Trey on the court. Another thing was we kept on putting fucking Trey as a four, locked, locked him as a four. He's fucking six eleven, he's the same fucking size as, as um as fucking Broom, except he's a freakish athlete. He's uncoordinated as fuck, but he's a freakish athlete. He's just uncoordinated as shit. Did we use him at the five maybe what twice the entire season? Like we were like two minutes maybe? How about giving the fucking super elite fucking athlete uh, uh, maybe a chance to five, maybe just like a couple minutes, you know, we we have an out of conference for a reason to kind of try to practice some of these things against the fucking sorry ass teams we play. <sighs> All right, that's it. Um, I thought coaching was good enough. No, fuck it. I'm not even, no, no, fuck it. I'm done. Um, this, to me, was a 7 out of 10 season. It could have been a little bit better if some things went differently or maybe some more experimentation got done on what was clearly a, a capped product in terms of the quality it could provide. But guns were being stuck to, uh, upper class were being respected. Uh, our guys were being given their chance to be our guys and could have been better, but it wasn't an awful season. It was not a great one. It just was a season that you hopefully will not fucking have again because holy fuck you do. Know.